My name is uh, Dr. Brijesh Arora. I am a professor in pediatric oncology at uh, Tata Memorial Hospital. And my passion is to find uh, the best cures for children with blood cancers and uh, uh, curing them through bone marrow transplantation. India is good and bad both. I would say is actually the capital of pediatric cancers because out of 200,000 uh, children who develop cancer every year, 25% uh, actually develop it in India. So we have roughly 50,000 new children with cancer uh, in India every year. The, that's a huge burden to take care of because they require very intensive treatment. Uh, but the unfortunate fact is only a third of them actually reach the medical care facilities because of very uh, huge social and economic constraints the families face in India. Tata is, I would say, India's most prestigious, advanced, apex, tertiary care, comprehensive cancer center and not only of India but of the entire Asia and among the best in the world. And why I say that is because uh, it provides the most advanced uh, medical care in terms of availability of medical oncology, surgical oncology, radiation oncology, all the light specialties required for cancer care mm -hmm. under one roof. We have more than 200 specialists together working uh, for all the patients with cancer. And we see roughly 60,000 new patients coming to us every year from all over the, the country as well as from surrounding nations. And I think the four things which uh, make Tata the best is, the first, uh, it has the concept of uh, the disease specialized care where each cancer is treated by a group of experts together. Uh, so we have disease groups. So for example, the group I work in uh, focuses only on blood cancers. So we all work together as a team uh, and each patient goes through this team to get the best treatment decided to the group decision. And then it gets the most advanced care available. So that's the first USP I would say. Second is I would say because it has the most advanced diagnostics available uh, in the country, which most don't have. And anywhere in the world what is available is available in Tata in terms of diagnostics. So no, everyone gets the best tools to confirm what they have and what kind of treatment they should get. And the third I would say is that it has the best of international treatments available to all the patients who come to us. At the same time, uh, we have the most uh, well-designed indigenous treatments available which were developed in this hospital over, over years of research which are adapted to the local uh, complexities, patients' conditions, their socioeconomic background. So it has, it offers the best and the most, uh, I would say, locally customized therapies to each and every patient who comes to us, depending on where they come from and what background they have. And the fourth, I would say, is that everyone who enters Tata gets the treatment. Nobody goes home without treatment, especially it applies to pediatric oncology, that no child leaves Tata without treatment. And we make sure that we provide the best care through whatever source we have to work with, through donors, through organizations, we ensure that everyone gets full treatment. Pediatric oncology actually, I would say, is the, the shining star in oncology. And why I say that is that in today, uh, we are the most happy oncologist uh, as pediatric oncologists because 80% children survive long term and do well and become part of the society. So in 60s, no child used to survive. And over the years, with uh, refinements in our understanding of cancer, with systematic inclusion of our children on clinical trials, both abroad and in India, uh, we have now been able to refine treatment to such a level that we are able to cure in certain cancers up to 90% children. But what has changed in last decade, I would say, is the ability to decide what intensity a child should get. It's called tailored treatment or personalized treatment. So each patient, based on their tumor factors, their patient factors, and most importantly, the genetics of the child and the, patient, and the tumor, uh, is able to get a very, very risk adaptive treatment. So if a patient has a low risk of having a chance of uh, recurrence of tumor, they get a very minimal treatment. While a patient has a very high risk tumor, a high chance of recurrence, they get a very intense treatment. So we get the maximum cure rate with minimum toxicity. This has happened, so this refinement and the understanding has come in last decade or so. The first I told you is that it's uh, the shining star because uh, virtually Eight to nine out of 10 children actually get cured long term if, if given the right treatment uh, in the right way. So the breakthroughs are that 
these children get systematic treatment on a proper clinical uh, protocol, all the children, which has now improved uh, the cure rates from uh, less than 10 percent in 60s to now 90 percent. The second which has happened, I told you, was to have a, is each patient getting a personalized treatment based on the genetics of tumor, the patient and other clinical factors. And lastly now, uh, what we are seeing is the advent of these targeted agents, which basically target the specific driver uh, or abnormality in the tumor in the genes uh, through which we are able to control tumor without causing much toxicity. So that's getting more and more incorporated. For example, a blood a cancer in children called CML now gets cured with just single agent drug called imatinib which used to be requiring transplant a few years ago. So, But more and more these drugs are coming into picture. So these are I think couple of things which have been the breakthroughs over the last few decades. Metonomic is a new buzzword, it's a new mantra in all tumors, especially adult cancers, but it has arrived in pediatric cancers and actually started with pediatric cancers. Why? Because the acute lymphoblastic leukemia, the commonest blood cancer, 50% children with cancer would have uh, ALL or this kind of blood cancer. It had the very basic paradigm of metronomic treatment. All children with this cancer get a very intense initial months of treatment and followed by a metronomic oral drugs for next two years. And that is where the highest cures are today, so it's 90%. And that is where I would say the, the foundation of metronomics was laid out. And from there on, we have now moved on. We are now treating uh, many other cancers on this paradigm. So in first line setting, I would say, in AML in Tata, for example, we are treating patients with uh, standard treatment followed by metronomic maintenance therapy, and we are able to cure them without transplant. In a very high risk tumor called neuroblastoma, which is tumor of the ganglion cells, now there is new data that use of a single drug, which is used for Chagas disease, can actually cure many children who were initially thought to be incurable. So these are really great breakthroughs through metronomic uh, treatments. And not only in the first line, but when children relapse, this is sometimes the most efficient form of treatment given to them because at very low cost at home, they can get these drugs for long term which can cause palliation of all symptoms with good quality of life and they can be happy at home, which never used to be possible. So at Tata, most of these children get metronomic treatments when they relapse and are not eligible for any standard curative treatment. So that's where I think is the second course. And increasingly in next decade or so, we're going to see metronomic therapies arriving up front as we get more and more data with good clinical trials which are being already developed in pediatric oncology. So the future is very bright because we're already at 80%. And what we're going to see is in future two things will happen that we'll with advent of this newer targeted agents and our more and more precise understanding of tumors that which genetic change is driving a tumor which is making it uh, grow we will be able to target that mutation and more and more agents are coming in both adults and in children slowly of course in children the second what will happen is as these agents become part of the treatment we will be able to reduce those very toxic chemotherapy agents which were part of treatments of children and which were causing a lot of long-term uh, uh, side effects in these children compromising quality of life. So we'll have these more targeted agents, less bad agents as part of their treatment. So we'll have children getting cured from 90% onwards to 100% maybe in certain cancers with least long-term side effects. That's where I see the future of pediatric oncology.